Hello and welcome to this week's mixtape. And I'm absolutely delighted to welcome on the show this week, Mark Day, guitarist from Happy Mondays. How are you, Mark? Good day. Yeah, I'm fine, mate. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you're bringing your uh, 30th anniversary Greatest Hits tour to Australia in, in October. Just read off the dates real quick. Your 19th of October, Tivoli in Brisbane, 20th of October, the Enmore in Sydney, 21st of October, the Forum in Melbourne. That one is sold out. There's a, an extra show added the 22nd of October, the Forum in Melbourne, the 24th of October at the Gov in Adelaide, and then obviously saving the very best till last, 25th of October, the Metropolis in Frio. Tickets from oztix.com.au. There's still a few knocking around for, for some of those shows. So, yeah, jump on them real quick. Are you looking forward to getting down under, Mark? What's, what's the vibe in the camp? Are you looking forward to a bit of warmer weather? Oh, yeah. Very excited. Can't wait to get over there. There's probably more sun over there than there is over here. And it's not raining all the time. So, yeah, it'd be nice. Can't wait. We've, we've just had, honestly, it's just coming out. We're in the spring now. Uh, September's um, sort of first month of spring. And it's, it's been a long, cold one, I'll be honest. I know I'm obviously I'm not a true blue Aussie, as you can probably tell from the accent. I'm an Essex boy, but I'm fully acclimatized. Uh -huh. And if it, anything drops below like sort of 20 degrees, that's it, mate. I'm, I'm, I've got my jacket on. I'm freezing. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's been a long, a long, cold couple of months through winter. But like you say, I, from what I'm hearing about the English summer, um, we probably had the best of it over here. Yeah, total washout. Yeah, yeah. So I've heard the times like that, I was sort of glad I made the move, really. Yeah, yeah. and I was, I was, I had Rowetta on the show two or three months ago, and she was saying about how she was worried about how hot it's going to be in Australia. But October is, is a perfect time, especially the end of October. It's just coming in. It's just coming in to... Sorry, my girlfriend's ringing me and it's coming up on the phone. Sorry Always happens. Oh. <laughs> She's just arrived in Bali. She's gone to Bali and all of it. And I said, let me know you get to your hotel safe. So that, no, that was her ringing me. So you, you left work and then your girlfriend's gone to Bali. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so what I was saying was October is a really good month, especially the end of October. It's just sort of like mid twenties, high twenties. It's a perfect time. So yeah, you won't be you won't be getting too flogged out in the sun, mate. When you're on tour, Mark, like, how, how do you like to, to roll? Are you sort of a sound check and, and chill sort of guy, or, or are you kind of a sort of you know getting out and about and seeing seeing the sights? Well, last time we went, I uh, one of my favorite hobbies was to uh, go for a wander see what was around the area so i did a lot of working in australia to see the site you know as much as i could do because when you've got a gig at night you can get up and you're in your hotel you've got all day to do something so this is to wander around the yeah. shopping precincts some local you know artifacts and um, visit museums and where the rest of them was faster in the bed so i like to go out and about four <laughs> I've, uh, i'm knackered now because um my hips broke in it so oh can you oh, swear all right okay yeah. No, yeah. you can swear, mate. Yeah, it's fine. My, my show goes out at sort of 6 p.m. So I, I just, any swearing, I just like sort of, you know, crop that out. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. No worries at all. Yeah. Just be yourself, mate. Yeah. Say say whatever you need to say. Yeah. I think I, I was chatting, when I was chatting to Aretha, she said her and Bez just basically get on it for the after parties and stuff like that. They're all about the partying. And I, uh, yeah, you, you don't strike me as that sort of guy at all. No, I'm more of a day person. Yeah. Free out. Fremantle, where where your gig is in Perth, you're probably quite lucky. It's, it's quite a historic sort of sort of town, so there's there's lots going on there. It's a maritime sort of it's a it's a dock port sort of town, so there's loads going on there. There's there's a really nice maritime museum there, and yeah, it's quite nice. a nice interesting place to get around. So yeah, I'm I'm sure you'll enjoy it there. There's some nice well, breweries I think as well. Schedule it's better than I've got time to do anything or not. Yeah, I think that's the last the last night of your tour is is Fremantle, so. Yeah, hopefully. I'm not sure when you're flying back to the UK. Are you heading back to the UK straight off the tour, or are you moving on somewhere else to more Probably. days? Probably, <laughs> yeah. Sleep on the plane. <laughs> That's the way, mate. That's the way. So I noticed on the Monday's Instagram, it's been a pretty busy sort of festival season for you. And, and yeah, the festival season sort of, I wouldn't say winding down now, but probably sort of slowing down a little bit. What's been some of your sort of festival highlights, Mark, over the over the English sort of summer, if I can call it that? All of them, we were lucky that it wasn't a washout because, you know, that's one thing you don't want is it to be, a, a, you know, just totally raining all the time. So the, you, you feel for the crowd who've got to stand there and watch you 
and they're getting absolutely wet through. And it was, so when we, the funny thing was when we came on at, uh, I think it was Crystal Palace uh, with James and the sun was shining. As soon as we went off, the heavens opened. Unlucky. Unlucky. Good time. That's when you, uh, the festival sets, you normally break out the Travis cover version and it, that's, that's normally, normally gets the crowd on side a bit of why does it always rain on me? Just yeah. crank that one out and yeah. Oh, yeah, from from my point of view, obviously, I've I've lived in I've lived in Australia for for thirteen years now, and and I remember back in the day when I when I lived in the UK, like festivals weren't like you know you could get tickets fairly easily. Like at one point, they were sort of winding up. I remember. Do you remember the Phoenix Festival that used to be like Birmingham somewhere? That that was quite a big one. That shut down. There's like you know not making yeah. enough money. You know, and now like twenty years later, like you. In a festival ticket for Glastonbury is like winning winning the lottery, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like it's oh, just it? and there's yeah, there's there's festivals like popping up left, right, and centre, and it's it must be so good for for bands, you know, especially during that sort of you know May to sort of September time, where you just you know there's so many gig opportunities out and about there. Glastonbury now is compared from the nineties, it's just quadrupled in size. It's just get yeah. lost there, spend days wandering around looking for things. It's just yeah, unbelievable. So obviously, not my thing. Obviously, you're not putting me in a tent in a field, watching bands. <laughs> did he want to live in like? It? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it must. It's daunting. So basically, they're on sale. And they're gone within the hour. You know, mm. and yeah. prices people pay. Yeah, it's, we were due to play there before COVID, but that didn't happen, and we're not invited back. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And just like sort of going back a little bit, Mark, or well, probably a, lo- a lot actually, not just a little bit. Like, how did you sort of come to to meet Sean and and Paul and and sort of form the Mondays in in the sort of very early days? Were you school friends, or did you know them from around the place, or how did that sort of come about? We went we went to different schools, so obviously it was when I bumped into their. Was luckily, they were looking for a guitarist. So I've been playing a couple of years already, so they just invited me down to just meet them and. Do a, you know, a Joy Division cover version. So we went and I, I turned up in my Queen's t shirt and they were two Perry boys. So there was a total contrast in fashion and music. And I just got me a new Arrow Pro 2 guitar, which I'm very proud of. Uh, and I've been playing the really arms and the chords and stuff. So and there was another guitarist, Matt, was there. He turned up and it was in a plastic bag. But he, he eventually went on to design the album covers. So he didn't do too bad. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Right. The Mountain Park yeah. Central Station design. So, yeah. And that's how I met them both. And apart from the fashion sense, which they have to take me shopping, yeah, well, I was in. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's brilliant. And and sort of over the last, I imagine like it's it's unusual these days for a band to sort of still be gigging over the sort of 30 years. But I think it's probably, probably helped the, the Mondays that you, you haven't sort of constantly gigged and, and toured and put records out for, for 30 years. Like you have sort of breaks and then you come back for a few, you know, a few gigs and a festival season and, you know, and then you have a break like Sean's got, you know, Mantra the Cosmos now and, and previously like Black Grape. Like that must help as well to have that kind of like, you know, break in between where you're not like in each other's pockets 24-7. I think that really helps with the longevity of bands when they do that. Well, yeah, I think being in the studio and doing albums doesn't help because and especially when you've got new albums to put out and touring in between. In the 90s, it was you're in everybody's pocket and that's that's mm. where the majority of bands do implode because, you know, when you see more yeah. of the band members than your girlfriend, wife, kids, it gets a bit stressful, yeah. you know. So yeah. what we do now is we don't put albums out because I don't know if there's a demand for it. We've not wrote in 30 years. I disappeared for 17 years, didn't play music, I was putting yeah, guitars in the lot. And I got a proper job, really. I've got my own business and in play. And so I've been in and out the Mondays. I was the first incarnation in 96. I walked away from the music industry because everybody's off their heads. Was a bit messy with factory and I didn't want to start in a new band. Couldn't change my style. I have a style and I can't get rid of it. I tried. It's just me. Yeah. You are what you are. Yeah. It's like a fingerprint. You are, you know, you do what you do. And um yeah. oh yeah, it was then I started teaching and got back playing again and then I got a phone call. So yeah, well that's you know, a bit of a seventeen year break. 
some Guadrilla crew or skin. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. How, how was it like picking up the guitar again and, and sort of, you know, did you have to sort of re relearn to play or would you sort of pick it up like riding a bike sort of thing? I got involved in teaching schools, went for an audition to, I applied and then they sort of found out who I was on the application form and one of the girls says, oh, and all the happy ones, they say, well, bring him in, let's see what he's like, just uh, have a chat and, well, one criteria was to actually play a piece of music for two professionally trained musicians. Well, I'd not played in 17 years, so I had to find a piece yeah. of music to actually play to these. And I was panicking because so I ended up, yeah. <laughs> the only final thing I could think that I could do was Blackbird by the Beatles. So I did that rendition in front of them and they were, they were really impressed with the enthusiasm when I started teaching yeah. in the schools, which educated me to start playing again. Now, I'd never done yeah. um, the rock classics, the things that you teach when you're, if you're a guitarist, you know what I'm talking about, you know, you black and blacks and all the rock wrist kids want. So I started yeah. to learn yeah. them because I never learned them as a kid. Or when I was playing guitar, I was a bit of a surfer, so I'd never stick onto one song. I'd never do the rock stuff because that was cliche. You won't get anywhere doing yeah. that sort of thing. That was my yeah. attitude. And then I started to learn to read music, play in orchestras and get back into it. And then after five years, I got that phone call. I think five, eight years or something. I got the phone call to join the Mondays. So I was out with the yeah, program. Okay. The thing that really was hard to do was actually remember what the hell I'd played 30 years ago, 17 years ago, or probably longer, yeah. actually. Yeah. But it wasn't written down. It was only on recording. So I had to spend a lot of time trying to find in the back of my brain what I was actually doing because it's different parts of the fretboard, different harmonies, different structures of the yeah. chord sequences that you can come up with. And I'd, I'd like to look at things outside the box and try some different old time. So, yeah, it was a learning curve, but I did it. Yeah, wow. That must have been tough. Just on the on the teaching thing, I, I'm, I'm, I know you, you'll be interested in this. In Australia, we have a program called IMS, I-M-M-S. I think it's specific to Western Australia. And kids, so my son's in that program. And kids get assessed for like musical aptitude in year four and five, which is nine and 10 years old. And they get offered placements in this program. So it's, it's run alongside the school and, and it's free. And he gets an hour's okay. worth of, of, of classical guitar tuition a week yeah, yeah. for seven, for seven years until he leaves senior, it's like high school. It's yeah. an amazing, it's an amazing program. Yeah. It, he's a bit slack with his practice. He prefers a bit of Fortnite and you know, he's, he's into his gaming. So I have to sort of, I, I sort of tempted him in cause he, he's a little Aussie boy. So he likes yeah, yeah. ACDC and all that kind of stuff. So I said, yeah, right, yeah. sit down. So he got his like little Yamaha classical guitar. And I said, right. So I taught him how to play Smoke on the Water. And, um, and he, yeah, he said, no, no, no. So yeah, so what I do now is I sit down with him like sort of, you know, a couple of times a week and I get my guitar out, he gets his guitar out and we go through the lesson together and it, it just sort of keeps him like a bit more engaged in it. Do you know what I mean? And, and you know, hopefully he'll sort of pick up his enthusiasm, his enthusiasm again. But, the IMS program is is really really good. Like you don't get yeah. that like level of tuition like anywhere in the world. And yeah, we in Australia we're really we're really lucky um, with sort of things like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a really I we have a service like that in it. Salford. It's called MAPAS Music and Performing Arts Service to supply all the skills with okay. free education, yeah. and it keeps yeah. it keeps music alive. And it's a place to go when like you know like you're an elephant and you've got to find somewhere to just you know end your life it's like that sort of thing because you can get yeah. your, your, your talent and what, what what you've learned over the past and influence kids because it's one of those like you said with computer games um it can take the imagination away from children they need something outside of what we're already doing so yeah. it's, it's a good thing really i think it's i'm just looking at the back of your wall there and i've got that one news of the world queen and the other one oh, yeah yeah and i've got it's the other a, one over it's there, a, the other it's a back it's a background photograph, but it is it is the actual wall of my office. But because right. it doesn't quite line up properly with the camera on the on the <laughs> computer, I, I just took a photograph of it and made it the back the backdrop of my wall. There's a yeah. few, so Ian Jury down there. Yeah, so, the yeah Fleetwood yeah, Mac. Yeah. I've got them yeah. all. Bob Dylan, and there's a few on the other side. So it's, yeah, there's Doors, JJ, Kyle, yeah. Sabbath, Let It But yeah, but like sort of on the outside, like you can't see them. Yeah, yeah, okay. Really? There was one more question I was going to ask you about touring and, and being with the band together. I know when I spoke to Rowetta, she is a staunch United fan. 
And I did a bit of Instagram research on you and obviously found out that you're, you're on the blue side of Manchester. So does it ever get like a little bit sort of tense when there's a game on or, or the derby on or how, how do you go together? No, we don't get tense anymore. So with the copy like United used to be because we win everything now. And no top anymore is the blue. Oh, that's so funny. But I don't mind that to us. You know, everybody, we, mm. we, everybody hates us now because we're winning everything. We're up with cheats apparently. So I get, I get all this from the United fans. Gaz is here. Rose United. Oh, is he? So oh, so you're outnumbered. Here all the time. I just, I just laugh, you know. I gave, I gave Rowetta like a, I used to do like a quick fire five sort of questions. And I said to her, as a United fan, who would you rather have, Harry Kane or Erling Haaland? And she said, she said Haaland just because that would mean that United, that City would not have him anymore. So yeah, exactly. Just, <laughs> that's where it's going. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. Hilarious. Okay. I'll move into the, to the other part of, of the chat, Mark. The, the title of my, of my radio show is The Mixtape. And generally what I do is I ask guests, imagine you're making up a, a mixtape or, or these days a Spotify playlist. And I give you a few sort of categories for songs. Um, and then you pick a song and then, yeah, we, and then in the radio show, I'll just drop them in, in, in between the chat. So track one of, of the mixtape, Mark, is put a song on your mixtape that you would be like a real, like a tension grabber, like a good song to, to kick off the, the sort of mixtape that you're making up. Not had much time to think about this, but the first thing I just come up instinct, so straight away, cross town traffic to me Andrew. Oh, that's a great shout. The intro Absolutely. is one of the best intros it's, ever. I know. It's such a chaotic it's intro to the song. Yeah. 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 It's Go for it. Yeah. yeah. I love Jimmy Hendrix anyway, you know what I mean? The way he just played the guitar. Oh, and okay. the story is great as well. I would just change from a right hand to a left hand because you couldn't get a left hand guitar in, in London at the time. So he had to put the strings on it. But um, yeah. he just had long fingers and he was such a stylistic. He didn't want to sing, but he had no choice. But yeah, love, love that tune immensely. Always gets me going. Track two for your mixtape, Mark, is put a song on your mixtape that you sing loud and proud when you're on your own in the car or the shower. No, I don't know if you've heard me sing, but it's pretty shit. In the shower, you get... I'd say... <laughs> don't stop me, though. I'm... I think it's just any song that has a nice melody that I listen to the last thing before the shower. I don't have one specifically that I sing when I'm in the shower all the time. See, what I do, I usually save a melody. And some songs have a melody that sticks in your head and you can't get it out of your head. So in terms of that question, I can't sing. But whatever's on the radio, and I can't get out of my head for at least right, 24 okay. hours. Right, okay. Cool. Yeah, no worries. And track three of your mixtape, Mark, is what's your favourite cover version? There again, we've not been a very big cover versions. So I've never done cover versions. When we were first got together, we did, was it Joy Division, Radio Live Transmission, as, you know, just to get used to, we did a Clash number, we did, tried to do a Soft Cell number, I take love, but I don't have a favourite. I'm not a big fan of doing other people's songs. It drives me nuts. <laughs> what about anyone ever covered the Mondays that, that you uh, that you liked? Well, there's a band over here called Happy Mondays, D A Z E. Oh, right, them. okay, yeah, um, yeah. I wish they'd find their own act, but they cover us. They even look like right, us. Okay, yeah. That's a good, that would be a good place to, for me to play Step On, I think, because ah, Step On obviously yes. is a cover version. We needed to get catapulted into the stratosphere of the top 40 thing, yeah, and we needed some sort of and this, this song came along. I was given the single, I had two weeks, and I, I thought, hold on a minute, this is not us. Because it's got low, I don't know if you've heard of John Conger's Step On, and there's three yeah, guitars yeah. in it. And I, I, I constant, all I could hear was ding, 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 ding. I thought, right, I'll strip it down to its natural form mm. and just do that. And everyone, great. We didn't have time to analyze it. And uh, yeah, to this day, yeah. we don't get money from it. Yeah, no, I, I, I played the original on my show two or three weeks ago because the show that follows mine is like an Americana sort of show and yeah. I always try and sort of like at the end of my show I always try and sort of like segue sort of smoothly musically in, in, into that show yeah so I played the original three or four weeks ago uh, on the radio show but yeah it's one of my when people say well, what are your favourite cover versions like your version of Step On 
because it is so different to the original. Like I love that when, yeah, when, it's, when it's cover yeah, versions yeah, are so yeah. different. <laughs> Track five of your mixtape, Mark, is put a song on there that you would put on to let the listener know that you're romantically interested. So if like you were trying to woo your missus like back in the day, like what song would you would you put on your mixtape to let her know? I do you know what? I'm 61 now. Romance is something that <laughs> was a long time ago with song. I mean, I don't, I'm not in love. 10CC? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, that would have been the school disco back in the day, same as me, I exactly. imagine. Exactly. First kiss yeah. in the disco. Damn yeah. right. <laughs> Mine was Phyllis Nelson, Move Closer. That was my first school disco slow oh, dance. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And oh, I'll skip track four there. Never mind. We'll go back. Track four, Mark, is a, a song that you wish you could have played to your 18 year old self. God. Sex Pistols, God Save the Queen, because it really ruined nice. prog rock for me. It's, I was into like the prog rock, and then punk came along, and I thought, well, why didn't I think of that? It's, you know, what they were playing was like, just wasn't what was happening, and it just got. Yeah. It's quite a few, actually. It's quite quite a few, but plenty one of them. The Free Radicals, you've got the music in me. Perfect pop song. Do one of them, yeah. you, you, you know, around the world. You have to do it again. Well, they didn't. They just did it once. You know the Free Radicals? Yeah, yeah. But we right? Yeah, yeah. But so, like, it's yeah, boring. Finished. Wrote one hit. Great song. I don't know if he's written it. I think he did it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but... Would yeah, you... Um, were you, were you at the Free Trade Hall gig, Mark, or were you too young for that? The Sex Pistols one? No, I missed it. I wasn't into punk. Right, I was more okay. of a rocker. Yeah. I was more of a rocker. Yeah. Uh, learning to play the guitar and listen to, you know, your rock bands, your 70s rock bands. Mm -hmm. um, I, wish I, I wish I was. I wish that would have changed <laughs> my whole concept of what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> yeah. For the, you know, especially at 18. I've not even picked the guitar yeah. up at 18. Yeah, it's right, okay. Twenties, so I was a late starter. So, you know, music was just a, some totally, there's so much out there at the time. You just have to be at the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, I wasn't. I love that scene in 24 Hour Party, people where, where Tony Wilson and Rob Gretton and, and, and Joy Division yeah. and Mick Hucknall and all them, they're all in that, they're all in that gig, Martin Hannett. That's exactly, that's an yeah. iconic movie scene for me. Like I absolutely love that. You know yeah. what everyone in that room like went on to do and achieve in music. Like just from yeah. sparking off from from that moment. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. Is the Free Trade Hall still going as a venue, Mark? Is it still operating as a venue, or is it something else? I think now? so. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, oh, because that that should have like yeah. sort of what's the what's the you know when you preserve a building heritage status oh, that building yeah. like for oh. for its musical significance. I think for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's a, I mean, it's probably got, yeah. I mean, it's like the boardwalk. Oh, that's got a black up now and it's off this space. But I mm. think the free trade will probably never be used like that because it has got a lot of history. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Really Heritage, yeah. I think. Heritage listed, I think it, it's true. called. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, last track of your mixtape, Mark, is something that's a little bit obscure, like a B-side or an album track or something that people might not have heard of. What's your favourite Monday's B-side? Ooh. Or album track that's not a single? Oh. Elijah, New Order. Is that a B-side? I think it is, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. That, no I worries. We'll... I'm going to play that when I'm in the coffin. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Peter Hook's not far behind you, I don't think, with, with the light. They're coming to Australia not long after you, I don't think. Um, oh, he's he doing, loves to. Um, he's always slow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's, no, he's not. It. He was only here. He was only here about eight months ago, and he's coming back again at the end of the year. That I think in similar, similar sorts of venues to to yourself. I think yeah. he's doing it in one of them where he does the whole album. I can't remember what it is now. Back I think front. it might be. Yeah, he's doing the back to front. Yeah, that's brilliant. right. Well, that's yeah, what. Yeah, you yeah, should do Really, play store that you know people haven't heard of. Yeah, and, and I imagine it probably. It stretches you as a musician as well to to go back and and play those album tracks so that, that you probably only yeah. wrote in the studio and then you've never done them live before. It must be yeah. do, you must yeah. keep it fresh for him as well doing that. We've got a few like that, but like that again, it's stretching. What did I play? 
Yeah, you might have to dig a little bit too deep for to, to pick up all those B-sides and album tracks that, from the Mondays, mate. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll wrap it up there, Mark. Thanks so all much right, for your man. time, mate. I really, really appreciate it. Really looking forward to the Fremantle gig. It's ozticks.com.au for the tickets. Yeah, I'll see you in October, mate. Thanks very yeah, much. Yeah, you will time. do. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Take care. And you, see mate. You see you soon. Bye, mate. Bye.